Out here prospecting for Kermode Resources. We are at the Camp Gold Zone. This is a 75 meter wide zone where you find mineralization. And uh, we have some bedrock exposed down here underneath this rock. And what we're gonna do is pop a small drill hole. We have our water jugs here. We got the motor. We have 120 liters of water. And uh, the reason why we brought this is because this gives you about 20 minutes of drilling and it is a pain to constantly hike to a creek or a river and fill it up. So we got a uh, bunch of water here so we can get going. Here's our drill rods. Got to replace this right here. We have a new drill bit. We're going to probably just pop this one on and use that. So what you do is when your bit wears down, you just take a file in between the grooves and file it down. We've worn out one bit so far. This one's still got some use on it. Just got to reconnect it back there. But I think we'll start with the, uh, the new one today. Remove this one and uh, let's get set up and then we'll drill the first hole at the Camp Gold Zone. Getting the second bit ready to go. So we have this test pit here that we dug. I think what we're going to do is we're going to head in this direction and drill across the showing or across the zone. I don't know how far we'll get. Um, this is pretty soft material and it might kind of bung up the drill. Got a little bit of core in there. I think this is going to be a pretty broken up core. Jammed in there too. One piece came out. So it looks like the rest is still stuck in the hole. We'll try and get it out. With this thing here, this is the core catcher. You stick it down the hole and it's supposed to catch any solid core. If it's loose, it's not gonna pick it up, but we can just uh, continue drilling if that's the case. It feels pretty loose in there. So we got a little bit more there, and uh, what it looks like is we're getting a lot of dirty water up, so we might have actually hit some kind of uh, 
underground soil layer or mud, but it's, it's basically not drilling through it. So this is what we got so far. It's definitely uh, some sulfides in there. I'm seeing pyrite galena, svalerite, there's some calcopyrite, I saw a little bit of malachite staining somewhere on here too, right up there. So we're getting stuck here. For the last uh, 20 minutes we've just been hitting material like this, kind of broken up rock and mud. So we're not getting much of a core. We think we might have gone on a bedrock or something, or maybe uh, hit some kind of muddy layer. And uh, we can't drill through it, it's just kind of wrecking the drill bit. So we're going to pull everything out and we'll take a look at the core and everything and uh, see how much we got in this little first test hole. So this is the core we got. This is actually the start of the hole here. Going down this way, then we hit this little oxidized patch. This right here looks like uh, some kind of green volcanic, Kermutsen volcanics. This right here looks like uh, it's almost some kind of sulfide mixed with uh, porphyritic rock. Possibly sphalerite, galena. There's little stringers of sphalerite throughout it. You got lots of pyrite, calcopyrite running down here. Then this is your next little row here. And your last one. Again, you have similar rock type here as you do at the start of the hole, kind of transitioning. And again, you have more of your sulfide rich area here. You got stringers of iron pyrite and uh, pyrotite. A little bit of calcopyrite, I guess, is what I'm seeing. And uh, that's pretty consistent throughout the entire core here. So we're going to wash this off and we're going to store it and uh, we'll have it for future testing if we need. We have decided to do Hole number two with our backpack drill. We are at the Camp Gold Showing in Nittanap, British Columbia. So we are going to be popping hole number two into this area here. This is all bedrock exposed. So let's get the drill set up and get to drilling this hole. So we're gonna drill here and hope for the best. It's really deteriorated and broken up. So it might just crumble and we may not get a very good core because you can see it just breaks up like that but we'll uh we'll do our best problems we're having here with this hole is the bedrock is so fractured as soon as we pull out the rod you have cave-in inside the hole and uh, keeps clogging it so makes it a little bit difficult to drill we've gotten 
just over half of a meter out of there and uh, we cleared the hole out a little bit so we're going to keep drilling okay we got a bit here some sulfides you can see how it's bent and that's just because a lot of this stuff is sloughing down making it uh, pretty difficult to actually drill properly that's it it's taken us about two hours just to get in a meter and a half just over a meter and a half so there's just too much fractured bedrock everywhere and it's making it a huge pain because obviously stuff is uh, sloughing down into the hole and uh, too difficult so we'll uh, we'll stop this one we'll take a look at all the core we've already pulled out and what's left in here so let's take a quick look here at what we got so it's it's pretty consistent for your host rock you have this gray silicus rock here maybe a little alteration and uh, you have some green volcanics in here Kermutsen volcanics and uh, down to the bottom of the hole you have a bit more sulfide content it looks like you can see there visible spallerite but all throughout you have disseminations of pyrite calcopyrite and spallerite and then you have little stringers right in the fractures here this section here has quite a bit of spallerite looking under the jeweler's loop this uh, six inch section here and then uh, this green volcanics has uh, more disseminations of iron pyrite so not a bad core we got 1.55 meters we're gonna log this and label it and uh, keep it for a future assay